appreciate that. It's very, very good of you. Um, and um, I'm looking, I'm looking very much forward to studying Mark. Again, I think it's it's important now again because it's it's foundational for all the other gospels, and and also um, we're we're it's our our gospel lesson almost every Sunday this this year. So, you know what what fathers um, uh, preached on last Sunday, we're going to be covering this 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 evening. So you know we'll have a chance to kind of go over things, you know, look at various interpretations, and and really you know make this a whole learning experience. So. Let us start with prayer and let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity for us, your servants, to gather together to study the life and holy example of your son Jesus as revealed in the Gospel of Mark. May this effort lead us to greater faith in the promises of your kingdom and help us to know and to do your will in our daily lives. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, I uh, I sent out this comment on the historical background of Mark, and it really changed my uh, thinking about Mark a lot. You know, I've read the Gospel of Mark several times, and I really never thought too much about it, why it was written, and 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 you know the background behind it. But but going through this um, in some detail really changed my thinking ab about the whole about the whole gospel and and why certain things are 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 mentioned mentioned in the gospel and some things are not. So I want to go through this. If you have a copy to to follow, or you can bring it up on your iPhone, or just follow me. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'm going to read it down here because I, I like to go through this. Uh, and emphasize some of the things that I, 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 I discovered in my studies. Um, I'm going to just start to read it here. It says, the Gospel of Mark is one of four canonical Gospels in the Bible and one of the three synoptic Gospels. That is, those synoptic, as th th those Gospels are with a, a, quote, similar view, and they are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Now, most... Most scholars, according to my research, most scholars agree that Mark was the first gospel to be written. And second, it was written by an anonymous person and given the name Mark so that it would appear to be authoritative. Um, and three, it was written around the time of the first Jewish-Roman War, that's 66 uh, Common Era, or A.D., to 73 uh, Common Era, A.D. And during that time in the, in the first Roman War, uh, the temple in Jerusalem, which was su supremely holy to all Jews, was destroyed by Roman forces. So a pretty eventful time in which this, this was written. And the most of the most of the sources that I looked at went on to talk about uh, what we call the synoptic question. And uh, I'll go into this a little bit. It says, as stated, the Gospels of, of Mark, Matthew, and Luke all resemble one another in content. Over three quarters of Mark's content is found in both Matthew and Luke. And then it goes on to sort of break it down. But only 24% of Matthew's content may be found in Luke, but not Mark. And 23% of Luke's content may be found in Matthew, but not Mark. So they all, they all, they all, Mark and Luke, or I mean, Matthew and Luke share content that's not found in, that's not found in Mark. Uh, and then uh, of the of the old percentages, 20% of Matthew's content is unique to Matthew, and 35% of Luke's content is unique to Luke. So these these gospel writers uh, you know had had various ideas they embellished on things or as they as they went forward or brought in greater detail if we if we want to call it that. The question is of how and why this has occurred is termed the synoptic problem. Over time, scholars have proposed two explanations for these similarities and differences. The first is Matthew and Luke not only drew on Mark as a source of content, but also on Q, which was a hypothetical written and possibly oral collection of Jesus' sayings. It, they, they've never found any evidence or no no written evidence of Q, but there, this is this has grown up that there was a there was there was a collection of Jesus' sayings, either written or oral, that these that that that. Um, 
Matthew and Luke drew on, in addition to Mark. The second is that there was a series of expansions in which Matthew built on Mark's work, and later Luke built on the work of both Mark and Matthew. So it was an expansion thing. You know, Mark started out, Matthew built on Mark, and then uh, Luke built on both Matthew and Mark. So it just got, you know, it got more, it got it got expanded and, and became out in greater detail as time has gone on, or as time went on. Whatever the case, there's consensus among scholars that Mark is the most reliable of the four Gospels in its description of Jesus' life and ministry. Um, Mark is considered to have been written in the style of an ancient biography or bios, concerned not only with preserving the memory of the subject, but providing examples of personal behavior and philosophy for readers to imitate. That's important because you're not just providing a history of the of the of the person or the subject, but you're also providing uh, uh, it provides examples of, of again of behavior and philosophy that you, the reader, are encouraged to imitate. And we, we certainly see this in 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 Mark. Uh, the original purpose of Mark was to strengthen the faith of those who already believed in Jesus and pro provide them encouragement. And that's key there. It's to strengthen the faith of people that already believed in Jesus. We just got through going through Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, and also uh, Philippians, all of Paul's work. And if we look at if we look at the, the time that that or that compare the times that Paul's letters were written to the time that Mark was written, you know, if it, if it was around 68, 69, 70. CE, we look at we look at Paul's work and it's in say 50, 51, 52 CE or AD. So the thing is there's about a 20 year span there. So Mark or Paul had already established um, um, uh, groups of, of Christians that were practicing already. So the, these these were the people that the, these practicing Christians, who are practicing Christians already, believe, believers already, they were the audience of, of Mark. Mark was not out to evangelize, bring in new Christians, but it, he was out to encourage those that were existing Christians. Um, and it, uh, go on, it goes on to say, Mark's audience needed this encouragement because it is thought by scholars to be a mixed group of Jewish and Gentile Christian converts who faced persecution because of their belief that Jesus of Nazareth was a long-awaited Jewish Messiah, the anointed one. So they've been persecuted because of their faith. And there's several thoughts about this. Early tradition holds that Mark was written for Christians in Rome who were being punished as scapegoats by the Emperor Nero for the great fire that devastated the city in 64 AD. You heard, you heard about Nero played the fiddle while Rome burned. You know, maybe you're familiar with that term. Um, uh, or that that scenario. Um, that's that, that Nero was he Nero was the the emperor at that time, and evidently he was looking for somebody to blame for all the troubles that had beset the city because of the great fire. And Christians just happened to be the people that he could he could blame. And that's happened over over time. We see that people, certain groups become scapegoats for others, and that's not a new thing in our in our world. Subsequently, theories have written that Mark was written for persecuted Christians in Alexandria or Antioch. And I, I didn't mention this in here, but Alexandria and Antioch were centers of, of Hellenized Judaism, where Jews were um, um, had assumed Greek um, culture, language, um, identity. Not not necessarily religion, but but these these other things they be, they came more Greek like they coexisted very well with Greek because if we if we look at Alexander's um, conquering of the of the of the civil well the civilized world at that time uh, about what was it, what was it help me uh, three hundred BC three hundred BC three hundred uh, BCE um, he began his conquest of the Mediterranean area and as as he moved on. Greek influence moved along with the with the armies, and 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 as as he as he settled these areas, they became Greek, and 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 
Alexandria in Egypt and Antioch in what is present day Turkey is where those were centers of Greek uh, Judaism or Hellenized Judaism. Um, and a recent theory suggests that Mark was written to encourage Christians in Galilee and the province of Syria, both located in northern, northern Israel and southern Lebanon, where, where there's a lot of problems right now. Um, and uh, they, these were uh, Christians who uh, were said to have been suffering because of the hatred of both Jews and Gentiles because the group did not take sides in the R Jewish Roman War. Uh, from what I read about, I did a little research in Jewish Roman War, and there was a lot of controversy um, in and around Galilee and, and most of, of um, well, actually all of, all of the provinces of, of, of Israel um, as a result of this, of, this, of this war. And it was a very unstable time at that time. Um, Mark was written in Greek, but its awkward style suggests that Greek was not the author's first language. In addition... His imprecise citation of Jewish scripture, his overgeneralized description of Jewish practices, and his doubtful geographic details all suggest that the author was a Hellenized Jew who was not native to the area of Jesus' ministry. Having adopted Greek culture, language, and identity, the Jewish Sadducees of G Jesus' time were examples of Hellenized Jews. That was surprising me. I never even ha, never heard of a Hellenized Jew before I read this. Dale, could you explain that term, please? Uh, Hellenized Jews. Hellenized I, Jews? I read that. Okay. I really didn't I, know I did, I did my best, but let me go back a little bit. Okay. As, as Alexander the Great conquered the, the Mediterranean world, you, you may, he started in Greece and he, and he moved through uh, Egypt, moved through, um, what is present-day Turkey, moved through Israel. He went all the way to, and my, and my history is not that good. He got, got all the way to the um, Fertile Crescent, Tigris, Euphrates, and there I believe he died. I'm not quite sure. But as he went through and conquered these areas, they became Greek. That is, the, the, language, was, the language became Greek. Trade was in, in uh, was, uh, commerce was, Conducted according to Greek um, Greek uh, uh, formulae, um, um, they, uh, they there were ideas. In fact, I read one thing that, um, um, for instance, there was a, a Jewish um, leader, and in the in the um, town that they were in, the Greeks wanted to to um, establish a gymnasium, you know, a school, and the Jewish leader rec recognized that and appreciated it so much, you know, his, his children went to that school. So the thing is that there was a, there was a, there was a mix of, of cultures there. The Jews didn't give up their identity, but they assumed a lot of these attributes that, that belong to Greek culture. Is that, is that relatively clear? Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I thought this was something I had never <coughs> thought about, never occurred to me, but the Sadducees, from what I read, that that it was the Sadducees. They they you know they, they, there's a controversy about whether there was a afterlife, you know there was no heaven. Well, the Sadducees believe that there you know they, that there was no heaven, and that the Pharisees believe that there was. Pharisees were the traditionalists. Sadducees were the more Greek oriented philosophies of of religion, not necessarily Greek Greek philosophy or Greek. I mean Greek religion, but philosophical adaptations. Um, but all, but it was important because these, these Hellenized Jews participated a lot in, in commerce. So they, they could, if they wanted to conduct trade with somebody in Antioch, you know, in Turkey or somebody in Greece or perhaps in Rome, they couldn't use the Aramaic language. They couldn't use Hebrew. They had to use a, a common language, and evidently that was the case. So they said that uh, the uh, the that the, the Hellenized Jews um, uh, 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 made up a lot of the of the mercantile class, the merchants, merchants and traders. So I thought that was an an, an interesting uh, viewpoint on, uh, or, or uh, again, a viewpoint on that. 
any, any more thoughts on that? I mean, as I say, that was just a revelation to me. I had never even heard of that or thought of it before. But but there was, I personally, I tend to think that that Paul Mark was writing for for Christians in and uh, uh, in Galilee in the province of Syria because um, uh, because there is more mention of of places in the Holy Land. There, it's imperfect, but there, you know, there is. It's it's the, the, the um, um, Mark has a good idea of the setting, um, and there was a lot of uh unrest in that area because of the Jewish Roman war and 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 Gentile and Jew, uh, Jew, Jewish and Gentile Christians would have been upset by this controversy and an unrest in that area that's only my thought but uh, but again there's a lot of proposals uh with regard to where you know who who where was that audience at and nobody yeah. knows for sure but you know, from what well, I read, well, wasn't it wasn't it also written after Paul had just died? Uh, yes, because I'm looking yeah, to yeah. see yeah. when when Paul died, and it says like sixty three or sixty four, uh, circa sixty two to sixty four. Sure. And this was written in six uh, around sixty six, so that would be. So was he kind of the replacement of Paul to no. continue? No. Paul? No, not at all. No, he wasn't a replacement for Paul. Again, he, 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 Mark or the the author of Mark felt it his mission to encourage Christians, encourage mm -hmm. these Christian groups that Paul had helped th these groups that Paul had helped uh, uh, originate. You know, mm -hmm. Corinth and 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 uh, um, uh, Antioch, Ephesus. You know, wherever he had where wherever there were groups of Christians. It was Mark's idea to encourage these encourage these Christians. So he wasn't he wasn't there to take Paul's place. He was just there to to assist, or in my view, to assist. Well, well, in, not saying that he was like ordained to. Oh take yeah, yeah, sure, sure, I understand, place. sure. But but that because Paul was no longer around to write, um, and to encourage. Sure. So uh, Mark was there to encourage to continue. To encourage, to encourage them, yeah, by writing stuff that Paul had not written about. Well, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. You know, that's, that's that's true. I'm sure he. I think you know probably Mark <laughs> used used. Well, if we go back to Corinthians, there are already things growing up or or common traditions in the in the in the Christian community, like about you know, Eucharist. You know, this is this is you know Paul said according to what it was handed down by. The elders in Jerusalem, or Jerusalem, or, or Stephen, or or uh, uh, Jesus' brother James, I can't recall who it was. But anyway, their Eucharist was a was a was a communal meal, and the 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 body, the bread consisted represented the body of Jesus, and the and the wine represented the blood of Jesus, which was a which was a new covenant of salvation. Mm -hmm. So so. Um, a lot of these things were growing up. Paul helped to establish a lot of this thought. You know, Paul's thinking is 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 found in all this thinking of the early church. But there were, there, you know, there's a lot of controversy. There were there were, you know, Paul talks about false prophets and all this kind of thing, and made him they made him mad. They came in and preached where he preached. You know, we went through all this before, and it, it was it was crossed him a lot of frustration. But part. <clears throat> According to what we we what, what we know, Mark was the first person to to sit down and say and 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 write about the life of Jesus and what the life of Jesus meant to Christians. Mm -hmm. um, so I, said, I, I, I you know I'm I don't mean to stop the conversation at that. I just think it's very interesting how you know we as a Bible study have talked so much about about about. Paul and seeing you know how he has worked to, de to develop Christian Christian communities throughout the Mediterranean world and then now Mark comes on, comes on and, and he sees a need to encourage these communities and he's he's doing that through writing down and expounding on the, on the life of Jesus um can I say something yes ma'am okay um first of all I always um, have thought that Mark was John Mark 
who was the person that went on the first uh, Paul's first missionary journey with he and Barnabas. Yes. And then, uh, and then if you recall, um, Paul refused to take him on the second journey. They had some kind of a falling out, which was never yes, elucidated in the in the uh, you know the epistles. But then apparently they finally reconciled later on. Yes. But um, I, I, you know, I always believe that 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 John Mark was this Mark, and so he was, uh, you know, like you say, he was a um, he wasn't from the Holy Land. He was from Asia somewhere because um, Paul picked him up during the first missionary journey. Picked sure. him up in like the northern part uh, of his journey, uh, which would be Turkey nowadays. Yes. It would be Turkey, and then the second thing was that um, Mark was written before the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, which happened in AD 70. Correct. Because he, they allude to the destruction of the temple, but it hasn't happened yet. A Mark does. So, and we know that the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. So it had to have been written before that. At least that's yes. what I've always learned. Yes, and I, I think you're correct. Yeah. I think you're correct because uh, Matthew, Matthew was written after the destruction of the temple, but 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 Mark was written shortly before. Uh -huh. But when we get into this, this is what intrigues me because Jesus talks about you know wars and rumors of wars, and you know if if you're yes. you know if you're on the housetop, you know don't take your cloak, run for the hills, you know. Yeah, that was a time where 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 life would have been very very precarious for for those people. And so I think maybe maybe Mark is alluding to to these wars and rumors of wars that would have been affected, you know, the out the outside, the, yeah. you know, this, this area. And I know you said Mark was the shortest, and you know that Father Leland said we don't go to Mark for for a birth a nativity story, Correct. but um, because it, there is no nativity. But what's interesting is um, forty percent of Mark it takes place in the last eight days of Jesus's life 40 percent so yes so so he's obviously very things that happened in Holy Week and so forth so um you know it's just a different um focus than the other gospels sure and 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 you're absolutely right now I will say with regard to the to the the author of Mark that was and I wrote this I wrote this down because I you know th that was the, the early tradition said that it was John Mark that did it uh, that wrote it, and that was, let me see, down here, well, I don't know, it's just, you know, that was the earliest tradition, you, you described it perfectly, actually, you know, that, that he, that he was, he was thought, he was thought to be the, the author, but since that time, scholars have gotten together and said, no, you know, for various reasons, we don't think it was. Oh, yeah. My Bible and, says it was. My okay. study yeah. Bible says it was. And nobody ever will know for sure. And nobody will ever know. And the thing is, is that you're, this is one thing beautiful about being a Bible scholar. You know, people can tell you, you know, you can argue all you want with people and so forth, but nobody's really ever going to know. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. going to know. Nobody's exactly. ever going to know. Yeah. And, and, and really, you know, how much difference does it really make? Right. Yeah. I think it, what, 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 what I think makes the big difference going through this thing here is that this is this is a this is a um a missile this is to encourage christians people that are already christians is to encourage them so as we go through and look at this and we look at the at at jesus um uh, early early um ministry you know we see we see his great deeds being recounted and and this would make this would make um a believer say wow jesus is in charge you know i i may be in difficult circumstance right now but jesus is in charge you know this this was done to encourage these people so if we look at rather than look at it as a historical document and look at it through the lens of being in a, a document to encourage um uh early christians I think it's going to make some of these things fall into place for us. That's my that's my view. You know, I mean, you can always raise your hand and say, yeah, "I don't." Damn it, I don't believe you, Dale. That's just fine. You're welcome to do that. That's just that's okay with me, because a lot of people probably don't. <laughs> but, well, but again, it was a revelation to me. 
Loretta, I'm sorry that I did. I, I just, yeah, I just, because you're looking at, when you think of Paul, Paul was a sad, sad to see. So he was, his teach his, his writings is to teach because that's what they, they did. So Mark as a bio, I see that, I can see, I can yeah. see that. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's a, yeah. It, that makes a lot of sense. It it does because they you know to to uh, like for us you know whenever we we get a uh, a movie like uh, coming on to that does a bio on on um, on anyone you know, like wa George Washington or whether sure. we learn a lot and and you know um, we learn a lot from that and then like with with being a bio on Jesus. <laughs> It's yeah, you want to know who you're who you're giving your life to or accepting their sacrifice for, and you want to know more about this person, and sure. it makes it more personal, you know. Sure. Just, yeah. so and and the idea of George Washington is a good idea because George Washington no not only had a historical life, but he also had a I um how should I say a uh I a, I a, a, a life that um that that was um somewhat um not exaggerated but but a life that 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 people drew a morality from yeah. you know, it was it was said that it was said that he was so revered during the during the civil war that that the union made arrangements for us for for Confederate soldiers be able to come and visit the tomb of George Washington because he was so revered. All the things that he had done, what he stood for. That's that's you know what did he stand for? You know not only what he did. You know where he marched this army here and marched this army there and fought in this and that battle, but what did he stand for? You know for hmm. for the new nation. So you're right about that. That that's a, that. I think that's a pretty good example of a, what we would call a bio. They call it an ancient bio, ancient biography. But that's you know. You're going to have a takeaway other than just the historical part of the person. You know, what did they stand for and how should we emulate that person? So, okay, I was just going to, going to finish. I just got, got a couple more sentences here. Um, says, still, despite the possibility of imperfect presentation, even though his Greek was lousy, they called it one of the one of the uh, examples I or, or sort of said they called it crude uh, Greek. Didn't seem to bother Mark. Even though, the, despite the possibility of imperfect presentation, the author of Mark goes on to deliver a message of reassurance and hope to the persecuted Christians. It is centered around Jesus' proclamation of the good news that God's kingdom has drawn near and that Jesus' great deeds of power and his redempting suffering are evidence that divine reign is taking root on the earth. You know, you, you, they say you may, it may be difficult for you now, Christians, but God's kingdom is 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 here god's kingdom is is taking root on the earth and jesus is evidence of it so that being said any, any more thoughts on that okay good i'm sure you'll have more thoughts as we go on but that gives you a little preface when i say it was revelatory to me when i read all this stuff i had never even thought about it before so i that's this is a sure good exercise i'm joanna i'm glad you made me do this <laughs> please okay you jumped at so, the chance so, so what i'd like to do and this is very short could someone read um uh mark first chapter of mark uh verse one through 13 it's not it's got like just like three or four paragraphs Don't everybody raise their hand at once. Well, I have to find it. Okay, good. Washings, no. What do you want? One through what? Uh, one through one through th thirteen. And this is the um, Mark one. Yes, yes, ma'am. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. 
a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Baptism and Temptation of Jesus at that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you, <clears throat> with you I am well pleased. At once the spirit sent him out into the desert and he was in the desert 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. That's it. Good. Good. You said 13 or 14? No, 13. You, thanks, okay. thanks, Gail. Appreciate that. So that gives us an overall view of what, what we're going to be talking about. So let's let's now begin with, with the questions that Ritzman has put together. And we can we can elaborate on this as we go forward. Okay, Joanna, you get the first question. Oh, do I? Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> what Old Testament prophecy did John the Baptist fulfill? What was his role? See Mark 1, 2 through 3. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you, the one who shall prepare your way. He will be the voice crying out in the wilderness. Prepare, pre prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight paths for him. John fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah 43, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare, pre, uh, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's role was to announce the coming of the Messiah, the Lord himself, and prepare the people for him. Very good. I do think if we're going to look at this as a message of encouragement to Christians, I think that maybe Richmond should have mentioned uh, the first verse, which says, in the beginning of the good news, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's a, that's a, proxima, that's a, that's a proclamation that Jesus is the Christ. Christ meant the anointed one. Mm -hmm. And that he is the Son of God. So he's telling them right off the bat, Jesus is, he is the, he is the anointed one and he is the Son of God. So that would, that would provide, a, you know, that, that would, provide some assurance that this is this is the real this is the real person you know jesus this, this is the real deal but um uh any any thoughts on on verses two and three no thoughts well I'll, i have some thoughts on it so let's let's go to isaiah and look up what is it? Verse 40. 40, 40 yeah. 40. Yeah, 3? 40. 43. 43. 43. Okay. All right. 43 reads. 43. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low and even un uneven ground become level and the rough places a plain. So the, the um, John the Baptist is going to be making the making the the way open for for Jesus. Mm -hmm. One hint of this, and I, I looked this up. Um, one hint that um, that the author of Mark was not really up on his scriptures was that um, this this introduction also includes a little bit of Malachi. I never read Malachi before. It's a completely new thing for me. Where is it here? In the Old Testament. In the old, yes, in the, <laughs> you know, <laughs> thank you, Loretta. <laughs> that's, that's very good. <laughs> I needed that. Okay, Malachi. <laughs> it goes back to it goes back to Malachi three. 
See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall will suddenly become come to his temple. So that's there's a little bit of Malachi in that as well, which which um, um, Mark didn't acknowledge. Oh, but not, Isaiah is much a much bigger prophet than Malachi. Oh, oh yeah, ab absolutely. And they said that you know they said for for the, for the people of that of that era and that time, it may not have made any difference. Because the thing is, is that, is that, you know, it was like, um, we have a, you know, I, I, what, do we, what kind of phrase do we use to talk about things? You know, just common phrase, you know, uh, the buck stops here or something like that. I don't know. People always use that, but, you know, it said, it could have said in the beginning, the buck stops here. <laughs> Who knows? But the thing is, is that this is what we use. And that would have that, you know, prepare the way of the Lord that may have been in common usage in in um, uh, in society in the society of of mark's time so that's fine there's no reason to be too terribly critical of of him but someone that was maybe a pharisee that knew isaiah right down to the jot and tittle he may have said I, i'm not so sure you know mark it's not he's not he's not exactly right here you know if you want to pick it apart it's easy to do so I just I just bring that up. That was something that I you know I saw as I, as I was reading it. They say that his 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 quotation of scripture is a little loose, and that's about about all we can say. But it may have been just the you know what was said during that day, so we don't know. So voice aloud, uh, make straight. Okay, uh, and I'm going to try to keep this to till eight o'clock or a little thereafter. So let's move on to the next. Uh, the next question um okay uh, question two who'd like to do that one i'll do that one okay. according to mark john's ministry consisted of what two activities so john came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins John's ministry consisted of the two activities of baptizing and preaching. Specifically, John preached that men must repent of their sins and be baptized. A person's submission to John's baptism indicated his repentance and symbolized his spiritual cleansing and forgiveness. Yes. Pretty straightforward. Pretty, pretty straightforward. I don't think there's <laughs> yeah, you know, there's not you know? too much we, we can. We, we I can... think that I just you know I I love that the Old Testament and the New Testament work in sync. I love how how you know again Isaiah Malachi it all sort of you know prepare ye the way of the Lord and how you know depending on how far back Isaiah was written and then here the the, the scriptures are being fulfilled kind of a thing and I. And I like that with John the Baptist, it just, it's, you know, another way of, of worshiping, you know, because having family that's baptized, that, that are Baptists, you know, this is exactly what they do. You, you go to that church and it's a big focus on your sins and repenting and, you know, and being saved. And yet there's others where we come in and we worship God and we, you know, read a scripture and we learn it from a different lens. So that's, that's what I like about it, but. And that's I think right. that's I think that's 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 very noteworthy, you know, because again, in 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 um, in Mark's day, you know, people would have, you know, if they if they were Jewish or had been or had been exposed to Isaiah, if you were if you were one of Paul's disciples uh, or Paul's followers, you would have been certainly exposed to Isaiah because he quotes it all the time. We saw it in his letters, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. Yep. So it was it was a common thing. So uh, it's it, you know again it's but but what they're doing is they're they're setting it up saying that you know Isaiah Isaiah talked about remember when we studied Isaiah Isaiah talked about the Messiah and the suffering servant you know and now we see Mark mm -hmm. bringing in this idea so mm -hmm. Isaiah is going to be liberally quoted here as as we go okay. forward. Okay. And I I just took a couple of notes here about they said baptism was a ritual cleansing and it wasn't necessarily anything that was it was a ritual within the Jewish religion, you know, that that was established type of a thing. It was a, I get the feeling it was something that John had originated 
you know, proclaiming, you know, asking people to repent. You know, he, I think Father Lena mentioned he was one of the Essenes, mm -hmm. um, Essenes. the Qumran community, and that, you know, they, they had a strict belief about, uh, about uh, cleansing, you know, forgiveness of sins. And so this was his idea of how you, a ritual cleaning, you are washed of your sins. Okay, so let's see, where are we going in there right now? Look at the next question. Um, number three. It's a long one. <laughs> How do the people respond to John's ministry? The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to hear John. They responded to his preaching by confessing their sins and allowing themselves to be baptized by him. It was a, a public, a public, um, you know, it, 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 if you went out to be baptized by John, it would be a public admission or a, a public statement that you are asking to be cleansed of your sins. And that's, you know, that I think that, that we might have might have had an appeal. Um, what do you think? You know? Yeah, I think would, so. <laughs> pardon? Yeah. Why would you have gone out so. there? <laughs> yeah. You just dunked in the river, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but man, you know, John the Baptist must have been so powerful, like just such a, such a, you know, I, I think about here's this guy living in a cave, you know, eating locusts and wearing, I don't know what it was, but some, some kind of craziness, you know, and they're, you know, but there's something about him that's special sure. that people wanted to, wanted what, what he was, what he was serving. And yes, what exactly. Jack's doing. exactly. That's a you good know? thing. And, and know, Joanna, and, we're going to get into that more because he was good. powerful. He was yes. powerful in his own way. And yes. as we get into this a little bit, we'll show how, um, um, you know, it, it was it was important. Yeah, I mean, well, he was a miracle baby, right? His mother wasn't supposed right, to have right. children, right? I mean, Elizabeth. that's pretty. Yeah. yeah, pretty crazy. And he was he was Jesus's second cousin because yeah. uh, Mary and Elizabeth yes. were cousins. Yeah. Yes, they were cousins. But, yes. they grew up together. You know, yes. they, they supposedly when uh, when Jesus was exiled to Egypt, John and and Elizabeth and that family came with them. So, and they were only six months apart in age. Wow. wow. But they didn't know about Jesus yet. I think the thing is because he was going after the king and and uh, uh, saying things about the king and his marriages and all you know all this. Oh, yeah. that 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 made him uh powerful and people were looking at that hey hey if he can say these things you know to yeah, i mean i think john done. knew though i think john knew that he was yeah, he was guy. special yeah. yeah yeah and and you you're all you're all bringing up something very important here we'll get into it number in number five here okay um, i'm going to read number four because this doggone ritzman throws in stuff from matthew i mean you know he wants to get into it in great detail here talking about the pharisees and sadducees this is not even in john and not even in mark you know i i'm i'm of the of the of the thinking that we should just leave this out mm -hmm. you know i don't i don't think you know if we were studying matthew yeah let's include it but i you know i don't see that i don't see a need to include this you know if you get into Matthew, he's 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 out there telling the Pharisees and Sadducees, you know, you vipers brood and all this type of thing and, con and condemning all these people and so forth. That's to Mark. That's not important. He's out there to get the message across. That That's not his job. He's trying to encourage Christians, you know, and to yeah. talk about how the the Sadducees and Pharisees or Pharisees or vipers brood it's immaterial to him. He just wants to move on. And get to get to the story. So now I think number five is more important. I'll read it. Yeah. What Old Testament prophecy did John the Baptist fulfill? What was his role? As was written in the prophet, uh, uh, as wait a minute. Where were we? Okay, no, I'm yeah, sorry. I'm going to say now, uh, now, now. This is what he preached. After me, there is. Coming someone who is mightier than I, 
I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thongs of his sandals. So I baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John told the people after him would come someone greater than him. Whereas John only baptized with water, the one who is coming would baptize with the Holy Spirit. John was referring to Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so you all just mentioned that John was mighty. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he was in his own way. If we go mm -hmm. to, um, if we go to Mark, um, two, 18 to 19, it mentions in here. Now John's disciples, John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting and the people came and said to, said to him, said to Jesus, why do John's disciples and the, and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast. And Jesus said to them, the wedding guests cannot fast until the bridegroom is with them, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. So there's mention in Mark itself about John's disciples. John had a following. So he had, he had some power, you know. You're talking about him being a powerful man. So he, he, had, his own set, he had his own group of disciples that, that followed his word. And remember, so, Andrew, Andrew was a disciple of John's and then oh, okay. he, he okay. ran home and got his brother, Peter, mm -hmm. and then they came and then, and then, then from that, they became Jesus's first two disciples. But Andrew was the, was the disciple of John Great. the Baptist. Excellent. I didn't even think of that. Thank you. Thank you. That's excellent. So I, I, I don't know where I picked this up, but if we read through this. Mark is making perfectly clear right here, making perfectly clear that um, that John is not the Messiah. Mm -hmm. John's not the Messiah. It's Jesus. He said, after me is coming someone who is mightier than I. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thongs of his sandals. If I will baptize you with water, he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So he's making it perfectly clear right here. To the whole world, John is not the Messiah. It's Jesus. So you get, you get you straighten everything out right there. Yes, John is a is a is a is a very powerful, holy man, but he's not the Messiah. So, you know, there, there he's 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 instructing he's instructing, you know, the 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 ancient world or the world at that time that you know the the Jesus is he is the Jesus is the only Messiah. A very important point if you're going to be encouraging people. Okay, so let's see where we are. Where are okay? We still got a little, just a little time here. Let me. I haven't had a chance to read one yet. This. Oh, I did read one, didn't I? No. <laughs> okay. All right. So you, you always do number one. Yeah. So I tell you. Bye. Okay. So whose whose turn is it now? The thing is, now I'm gonna I'm gonna skip out on 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 this again because Richmond goes in. We get down to three, and and he says, according to Matthew, printed below, what was Jesus' physical condition when the tempter came to him? He talks all about the tempter and how he's tempted in the wilderness and all the things that happened. Right. Again. Which is not in Mar Mark. It's not in Mark. Mark doesn't care. Right. No, he's not important about how all this stuff happened. Now, it was important to the audience of Matthew, which were Jews. Jew Jews, yeah. Matthew's, yeah. Matthew's audience were Jews. That all that stuff would have been important to them, and and Matthew clears up some inconsistencies in in sure. in that. But to Mark, get right to the point. Jesus was out into the went out in the wilderness and was tempted. And if you and if you recall, tempted, lead us not into temptation. It's actually bring us not to the test. He's testing Jesus. You know, are you worthy to be the Messiah? Are you really, are you really the, are you really the Messiah? Are you the real, real, are you God's real son? So Satan is tempting him, you know, and he gets into, you know, jump, jump off this building and the angel will pick you up. If, you, if you're really, really, really God's son, you know, uh, then these things will happen. But, you know, Jesus says, you don't bring the Lord, your God to the test. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's explaining that. So, um, yeah, let's, I guess we really only knew what numbers one and two because three, four, and five are all Matthew. Exactly. So I just want to get through one and two, and then I think we're good. Okay. 
Yeah. I think though, I think I just want to focus on Mark if that's all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Think, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So would someone read uh, number, number one here on the. Okay. I'll read it. Okay. Um, what did Jesus witness as soon as he came up out of the water after being baptized? Immediately after coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the Holy Spirit descending upon him in the form of a dove. A voice was heard out of heaven. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Jesus saw the heavens being torn open and the Holy Spirit descending on him in the form of a dove. Then a voice out of heaven testified, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. God the Father was bearing witness to his pleasure with his obedient son. Very good. Very good. Any, any, any thoughts on that? Well, the idea of the heavens being torn open, that's, that's the barrier between heaven and earth being broken. You know, and coming down. You know, the, the 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 God's God's word is coming down through that barrier, opening the barrier and announcing that He's pleased with His Son. Although you know, um, part of baptism, as we just said, was supposed to be uh, repenting your sins, and Jesus didn't have any sins to repent. Exactly. So I exactly. don't know why He felt like He had to be baptized. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and thank you, Diana, because there was some discussion about one of the commentaries, you know, you know, hey, but, 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 but if you get into Matthew, I think he says that Jesus thought, it, you know, let it be set, let it be done for now. I can't recall the exact yeah. quotation, let it be done for now. You know, it was and okay. Just, for him. You know, let, let me fulfill this part. So yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm not, I'm not He's going fulfilling to fulfilling some prophecy. Yeah, yeah. I'm fulfilling some prophecy. But I'm so sorry, I, I, I read, I read, um, we're, 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 are we all familiar with, with um, um, Paul's uh, um, uh, conversion on the road to on Damascus? The road to Damascus, uh huh. Right, right, right. One of the common, uh, commentators said that this, is, this would have been the same kind of thing where Jesus, no one else, no, no bystander heard these words, but Jesus, yeah. Jesus heard these words. Sure. You know, yeah. You're my son, with you I'm well pleased. And just as, and, and also they, 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 they mentioned another example is would have been at the transfiguration, you know, where Jesus was, mm -hmm. and, and was transfigured along with Elijah and Moses, or Jesus was transfigured, he was, he was transfigured, you know, to where he, you know, he assumed the look of the son of, of the true son of God. So it was one of these types of, one of the types of these experiences that Jesus would have, would have had at, mm -hmm. at that at that moment any any more any more thoughts on that obviously it had to be pretty darn uh how should i say um scary you know in a way you know or very very you know very um um you know want to be pretty emotional about the whole thing well i mean i think what i've always taken from it is his his humility and yes i am without sin absolutely however he's still human so i felt you know that's what i thought that you know it showed it showed a um him you know being baptized by john which made i think made john even you know this this person who had been talking about this person that's coming and and you know kind of passing the torch now i've been preaching about you and now now you go and follow him. And I mean, you know, maybe I've watched too many movies about, you know, John the Baptist and Jesus of Nazareth, but I, that's just how I looked at it as um, how I look at it as his, his absolute humility and just, you know, and dying for our sins. That could have been part of it too, you know, <laughs> kind of preparing no, no. for what he was going to have on the cross when, you know, when he paid the ultimate price for us. Well, so. when we ask, well, why would Jesus, we was that who was out sin? Humility would be a pretty darn good answer. You know, he was humble enough to be, you know, he's humble enough to be, you know, hung on a cross. He's humble enough to be baptized by John the Baptist, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So he was I, also he was, human. he was also very human. He got sure. angry with his disciples when they fell asleep. He got angry with people when they didn't listen to him. And they, the money lenders in the temple and the temples. Yeah, I mean, he was still human, and sure. that was, I think, part of that baptism thing. Is that that was a desert that's showing him that he was also <laughs> yeah. us. Sure. You know? yeah. Very good point, Gail. I think it's an excellent point. You know, and his I, baptism was different than everybody else's because he was baptized. The Holy, you know, the Holy Spirit descended upon him. Sure, and that didn't sure. happen with other, others. It happened. It's like 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 opening up the first page of a book. Boom! Now here we go. You know, yeah. To me, I look at his baptism. It's the start of everything. Boom. And 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 my commentator said that you know. Oh, where was that written in here? You guys are bringing up all this stuff here, and I can't find it now. Um, well, it just but, I'm, but, I'm reading that it right that Jesus John says the reason he came became no, um, so that the fulfillment of all of all righteousness. Jesus was baptized again to fulfill, just like Diana said. Diana's always right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Diana, you're um, always. She knows all this stuff backwards and forwards. So, okay. So number two, right? I think it, yeah. says, it, it, it says a little bit about that too. Sure. Go ahead. What happened to Jesus immediately after his baptism? What do you think was the reason for this? Then the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. For 40 days, he was in the wilderness being tempted by Satan. He was among the wild beasts, but the angels ministered to him. After his baptism, the Holy Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness where he was tempted or tested by Satan. God allowed Satan to test Jesus in order to verify or prove Jesus' obedience and thereby demonstrate that Jesus truly is the beloved, obedient son of God. So maybe he let himself be baptized just in case he goes, you know, I do want to rule the world. You know, let's (laughs) let's just join together. So just in case. So he'd be, you know, forgiven. But. You know, I, I do think it's kind of funny that as soon as that happened, he goes and does, he goes for 40 days and 40 nights. So, you know, there's a reason for everything. For sure. So, sure. But, yeah. but our, my, the, the, my comment here, you know, believes that, that Jesus ministry to Mark, Jesus ministry began with his baptism. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was, that was, that was, that was the kickoff of, yeah. the, right. of the ministry. Right. You know? mm-hmm. And, and if we look and, and, and Father Leadham brought us something, I, I, you know, it's hard to explain, you know, why don't we mention, a, you know, the virgin birth and we mentioned, you know, uh, uh, the, going to Peggy said there was no virgin birth. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Now, let's not get into that. That's a, t- that's a touchy subject. Who's okay? Peggy? <laughs> uh, but, but the thing is, is Peggy that you know, why, why didn't he do this? And I, I would, I would, I would, Posit, I would say that to Mark, to Mark's audience, this didn't make any difference. You know, let's just get right down to the to the to the message here. I'm trying to I'm trying to explain to you people that Jesus is the son of uh, the son of God, or we or we're, we now know him as the son of God by his great deeds and suffering, and that you know you can be encouraged by this because. Jesus, you know, the kingdom of God is here. So the thing is, I, I think that to, in, in my view, Mark didn't believe that this was wholly necessary to get his message across. And, 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 as, and, as, and as a result, and, may, and maybe, maybe, the, maybe all the thinking and so forth and, and, and traditions and so forth hadn't grown up uh, yet, which would enable them, enable him to, to put all this down. But he, remember, he was go, he was going to a he was going his a, a lot of the people in his audience were Gentiles, and so this might not have made any difference to them. We don't really yeah. care. So, I'm just saying that that um, what it, what was important to Mark's audience may not may may have mm-hmm. been un, unimportant to you know someone else and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Any, any thoughts on that? Um, um, Mark just, he wanted to communicate this message of reassurance and getting into Jesus, you know, 
kinship with John and 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 the birth of Jesus and all these other types of things. You know, we talk about immediately. Well, this is this. You know, he he wanted to communicate a message immediately, and this this was this was not necessarily immaterial, but it wasn't important to communicate his message. That's that's my view. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I just think about the Episcopal Church. I mean, that's kind of what we do. We're you know we're reinforcing things that we you know our faith and sure sure in the Baptist Absolutely. Church it's about you getting right with Jesus you know you all sin out go to the you know get baptized and, you know <laughs> yeah it's just it's a whole yeah. different way of looking at things sure sure you know so that's how I sure sure that's yeah. perfect I, I I agree with that holy I agree with that holy we should be inspired you know by you yeah. know and encouraged by what we read what we hear in the gospel and in the yeah. you know in the other readings as well. That's that's what they're put that the, the, what they're put there for. Mm-hmm. So encouragement and, and and inspiration. That's what we need. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm I don't necessarily think that we need to go into Matthew here. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's I think good. that you know that that we should just just leave it go right here because yep. you know, if we get into this, we're just going to be st- we're going to be studying Matthew. And really, many moons ago, we we already gone through Matthew, and it was mm-hmm. a fun fun time. Um. But we're studying Mark now, and I think that you know, I think we've gone far enough to really get you know get through that that period up through the baptism. Any more thoughts? No. Comments, criticisms? Oh. No. No, I'm, I'm excited. Okay. Right, Father Leland better be on his toes. <laughs> he, yeah, you got right. He better be on his toes because yeah. you know, we're we're going to be. Uh, that's, yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. Be careful what you say, Father. Because, <laughs> because because you got you I got one two three four five six six <laughs> critics out there, Bible scholars that are That's right watching Bible scholars to what you say yes. listen to what you say That's we're going to be critiquing yeah. you <laughs> yeah yeah and you're all qualified as Bible scholars she was don't worry you're good hey. okay folks okay it was thank great you. thank you ever so much for coming it was a lot of thank fun thank you it was wonderful i, I loved it i loved yeah, it yeah i do appreciate yeah. it I'm really thank excited you dale for all your work, work. Thank yes you. it was yeah. awesome yeah it's it's just a lot of fun and you're such a great group it makes it all the more fun okay yeah. all right I'm glad we started again okay okay so yeah, I'm, I am okay too. okay <laughs> Good night, all. Okay. see you see you Bye. Bye. everybody have a great week all right you, you too. too all right Bye. Bye now. Bye.